we are with our good friend, owner, and founder of Value Electronics, Mr. Robert Zone. Robert, how are you today? Thank you. All is great, Brian. Thank you again for coming here today. My this, absolute pleasure. We have a very is, special day today, do we not? This is indeed a very special day. I don't think I've been this excited about a new TV launch uh, since my very dear friend, Dr. Larry Reb Weber, invented the plasma television some 25 years ago. This is very exciting. And to see mini LEDs come up in quality to be so close to the emissive displays that we love so dearly, for all the reasons that we like emissive displays, deep rich blacks, very good depth and detail in the shadows, really nice clean images with no blooming and haloing. So now they've got select mini LEDs that get very close to emissive display quality. Well, Rob, and let's talk about we have Sharp. One of them. We have Sharp here. Sharp is the last and only LED to actually win the Value Electronics That's shootout. Right. This Thank is you. their first TV in a very long time. Tell me a little bit That's about right. it and why you're so excited so about it. So in the 20 years that we've been sponsoring and since I created the TV shootout event, only once did a transmissive display win, and it was Sharp. They built, actually for Pioneer, the Elite Mini LED that was made by Sharp. And it was the only time that a LCD LED TV ever won against OLEDs and other emissive displays. And it so, has just snuck in to make this year's shootout, has it not? Yes, it has. So, so it will this be will be competing with all the other fine premium flagship TVs in our September 30th uh, TV shootout coming up in five weeks from today. Now, Robert, you had mentioned to me Sharp, their own panels, their own processor. That's right. They do share that love for accuracy. Tell me a little bit yes. about their signature that you've seen in the past and what you hope to see now. Right. So Sharp actually makes the processor, the SOC processor. They make the processor. They, of course, develop all the software and firmware that goes with it. They also build the panels themselves. This 65 inch has 2,160 local dimming zones. You won't find that on another TV because they proprietarily build that for this TV only. It also has a bazillion zillion little tiny mini LEDs. They've increased the volume and the density and the smaller size of the mini LEDs. So this TV is very bright and very black. And we noticed just in the box that the TV is rather heavy. So we're thinking zone count, but tell me a little bit about what you have well, saw the, the sound system with the yes. prototype. Another reason why it is so heavy and it is, this 65 inch TV is the heaviest of all 65 inch TV class. It'll still wall mount fine because we're going to anchor that into studs in the wall. So it's not, a, it's 85 pounds. But one of the reasons that it is this heavy, other than the construction, which is really nice, the chassis and frame is very premium quality, as is the power supply, which has increased this year in its capacity. So there's no dimming going on with this TV, no matter how bright and big the average picture area is, it's not going to dim. But the other thing they did is they put in a very high-end audio system. It has 11 discrete channels of audio and two subwoofers on top wow. of it. Wow. Yeah, 11 channels with very high-end, good quality speakers and very good amplification. That has added to the weight of this. But this is crazy, insane crazy, built-in TV audio. I never thought I would be bragging about a TV's built-in audio before. But this has really excellent TV audio quality. Well, for me, Robert, since we've known each other, it's been rare to be excited about a brand we haven't seen in some time. That's right. So we're going to be surprised by the remote. The unboxing yes. is important. It was actually wrapped together on a pallet by itself, which you'll see a picture of in a moment. But Robert, I'm excited. You're excited. Let's get it unboxed. Let's get it unboxed. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Brian. This is Tech Therapy. Thank you so much for watching as we unbox the Sharp Aquas XLED. Spent about 10 hours with the XLED. We're going to go through again the unboxing. I also showed you a very short clip of how it was sent on its pallet and why the packaging and unboxing is important as it does say 
a good deal about quality control from the manufacturer and the XLED is packaged very well. And again, on the uh, drop ship on the pallet, it was secured very hard to actually unsecure it, which says a lot about their thoughts on this TV. In the packaging, we have detachable cable. We have our remote. Good to see some numbers on these remotes. They've become more minimalist throughout the years. It is not backlit. It does stand on its own. I'm going to show you every stage of how it looks as we unbox it. And within the box, we have a three piece pedestal. Last piece is just a cover. And at Leanne of Value Electronics um, will also be assembling the stand along with me. Now you're going to hear me compare uh, the chassis and the body of the XLED to a plasma. And I mean that in the nicest way and most respectful way. And the base reminds me of that as well. Premium, solid, heavy. Leanne attaches that first piece on four screws. It is the mount. You look at the back of the XLED. I love the back of this TV. You see all the speakers. It has an aggressive look from the back. It does have a throwback look as you have the Atmos up firing speakers at the top. Silver bezel. Bezel from the front is almost non-existent. It is going to be a little thick as it is a mini LED. Now we also put the TV slides right into this bracket, four more screws, and then you're done. I would have showed you us putting the TV in, but just Leanne and I were actually putting it on. And then you have the cover, which finishes it up. And it has a very nice premium look. It also swivels, which is actually very helpful. And again, it can be mounted. Looking at the four HDMI, Ports, I believe three of them are HDMI 2.1. I will need further clarity or further clarifying of the settings or its inputs. Uh, I'll have that for you next week. It is semi-gloss. This TV definitely excels in a bright room. It has a gorgeous look to it. Again, very premium. Has an elegant look. Showing you the back. Again, I love the aggressive look to it. It is housing speakers in the top and bottom. Now, I, for one, don't mind mini LEDs having that thickness. I want that. Um, typically, if you get too thin with that thickness, you're going to lose either the speakers or the build quality. So as far as I'm concerned, LEDs need to be this thickness to give me enough local dimming. Let's jump right into some demo material to show you how it looks right out of the box. And it is stunning. The words that come to mind with the XLED for me is accuracy and clarity. Now, out of the box, you're going to be in the standard preset. We will show you that shortly. But I always like to show you what you'll see when you take it out of the box, as not everyone is going to be calibrating this and not everyone needs or even likes that image. We will jump through all the presets shortly has a very nice saturated poppy look. It is extremely bright. But what stands out to me, and I'll repeat this throughout the video, is clarity. Processing clarity. I love the fact that they make their own panels and their own SOC. And keep in mind that I'm in an extremely bright room. There is a large sunlight above me or skylight above me and windows behind me. And it was a very bright day and it handles that with ease. So right off the bat, it's a great bright room TV. Later on, you'll see it in a dark room and it excels there as well. Now this is where we will go through the presets. I will show you how it ships out of the box. Now forgive me as I'm familiarizing myself with the um, what each button does, what shortcut menus we have. 
And it's why I want to also leave the video longer, organically show you that this is not a TV that I've seen before. I can't say this is the same as last year's model. Um, I'm not familiar with the settings. Quickly going through and showing you how local dimming works, the different names for each setting. Every manufacturer has different names. The local dimming on the XLED is very good. What's interesting though is disabling it or moving it down to low not only affects its backlight but does affect its brightness. So keep that in mind. I would always keep it on medium or high. There are a lot of noise reduction features. There are some features again that I'm not familiar with or the way they're named. Things like adaptive Luma control, I'll have to check that out. Local contrast is a dynamic contrast. I do like to be able to change the gamma. They do have that here. So there are a lot of different settings to go into. And again, we'll go through all of those here. As I move around on my chair, forgive me. Now it is a little arduous to hit a setting and back out. I'd like to see those settings change on the fly while not jumping all the way out of the menu, which you'll see in the picture uh, preset settings and where I go through those. But for me, you guys here on this, I like the setting 10 bit color reproduction. Anytime I look at a TV, what I'm looking for is flexibility of image. What I mean by that is I don't want to just have a TV that is good at one thing. I'll tell you right off the bat, this is a very accurate, very clear image. Excellent movie TV right off the back. The, um, the key though is, can it look poppy? Can it look vibrant and remain accurate? And the answer is yes. You'll see that also in the SDR portion. Now to expand a little bit on what I mean by flexibility of image for me is, can you go into another preset, something like standard, which is very vibrant, but loses its accuracy. Can you then bring that down to make it look more accurate while retaining the vibrancy pop and saturation also with movie mode, which you're going to see me move into here, which is not quite as bright is more accurate. Can you make this mode? more poppy and more vibrant and more saturated. There is no one science fits all. There is no picture quality for everyone. So I'm not a picture quality snob in terms of accuracy. I do know every one of you that are watching want to know if the TV can look um, more dynamic, can look the way you want it to, especially out of the box. Out of the box, it looks phenomenal. And yes, you have the ability to change the image to however you like, and it will be your TV. So it is up to you. Now, not to compare to other manufacturers, but what I've seen thus far, it has the accuracy of a Sony in terms of its picture quality. Doesn't have the same, uh, I should say it has the same signature. They don't look alike. It doesn't look like a Sony, but it looks like it has that same accurate director's intent um, thought process involved. It also reminds me of a Panasonic OLED. Uh, we had those here a couple years ago, the Hollywood monitors that Robert carried, very accurate and were the best OLEDs I'd seen at that time. Now going through the different presets, how they look from top to bottom, you have your eco mode, you have a comfort mode, you have movie sports. So we're going to show you each of those and how they change the image quality. Now, years ago, if you had a TV that was very accurate, there were times where you couldn't make it look the way you wanted to. That is not what you have here. Now it does have a plasma like feel, as I mentioned earlier in the chassis, that is nothing but a compliment. It has that elegance. The picture quality is not plasma like it is an LED. It is very bright. It is very clean. But it's great to see another manufacturer focus so much on processing. Clarity. Now for the majority of this, we are going to stay between movie and standard. The movie mode will be popped up a little bit using some of its processing. 
but for the most part this will be movie out of the box and it looks fantastic again keep in mind very bright room behind me and it looks fantastic screen uniformity is excellent didn't see any issues at all now there are a large number of zones over 2000 at 65 inches I cannot wait to see this at 75 and hopefully someday at 85. We'll also see the OLED Sharp Aquas next week. You'll see that here as well. The OLED will not be in the shootout, but this LED or XLED will be in there. And I can't wait to see how it compares to all the other TVs this year. It is a tough year for Sharp to be jumping back into, but it is definitely up to the challenge. Now in the comments, let me know what you think of Sharp. Sharp for me is a tale of two companies. Some of you don't have a great thought of the last few years as Sharp. For me, I will remember the Sharp Elite. I will remember uh, the TVs that I always wanted and I couldn't afford. <laughs> so I have uh, great thoughts of them. I'm glad they are back, but let me know what you think. Are you ready to see what they're capable of? Will they get back into the top? The Sharp Pioneer Elite was one of the best LEDs ever made. And why I say it's a tale of two different companies is that some of you feel a certain way because you've only been to TVs in the last few years. Some of us feel another way because we've been doing this for a very long time and have been a fan for many, many years. So it all depends on how long you've been um, a part of the enthusiasts uh, TV market. Moving into SDR, I want to show you how saturated and poppy standard SDR looks. And this is a very tough demo. But just out of the box standard, very poppy, very vibrant. As we move into out of the box movie, immediately more accurate, but still very vibrant. There is no brightness loss in SDR. Now going through the settings I saw before, it's something I have to get better at and learn. Robert does have a call with the engineers this week to get more information on the HDMI 2.1s and obviously um, dynamic, dynamic tone mapping, some of those settings that are named different things now with Sharp. Great contrast ratio, very high contrast ratio, excellent local dimming again it gives you that 3d pop which is so important now moving into our very good friend jennifer gala of the also hdr super channel special shout out to jennifer this is her content a lot of the content here is hers but why i love using this piece is the aspect ratio for black bars testing check out jennifer in the description and please like and subscribe to both her channels jennifer gala and hcr super channel as you can see the black bars are midnight black even off angle and what you see at the bottom is just the reflection off of the carpet moving into the brightest preset of all i like to go into this preset for those of you that love this preset again i don't judge vivid dynamic whatever you like i don't care as long as you're happy and i want to be able to show you all aspects also like this demo as the transition to black is very quick and the xled handles it with ease very exciting for me personally to be able to work on a TV that hasn't been out in many, many years to see the remote and the nuances and their signature and their settings. Getting to know it is so fun, which is why I'm leaving this video long. I want you to experience what I experienced there. I like to pan away and also show you how a TV looks as it stands on its own, giving you that 3D look. Now remember at Value Electronics, this TV is surrounded by the best TVs in the world, both 4K and 8K, and it clearly belongs here. 
because if it doesn't, it doesn't look very good in the room and it looks fantastic. No problems with motion. I will say the motion settings are a bit limited if I'm gonna critique that. I will have to put in uh, motion calibration settings to see how it handles fast motion. This TV will also be calibrated by D-Nice. And then we'll get all our numbers and find out what it's really capable of. Now, coming up, we're going to focus also on the sound, which is a huge selling point here. Upfiring speakers. It sounds amazing. has great bass. No distortion at all. And the great surround effects. You see the black bars there are very black. And I am not changing the exposure. You're not seeing anything dim here. The camera is free. But it's the clarity. The detail. And for me, again, think Sony and Panasonic as far as clarity and accuracy. Very beautiful. Cannot wait to see it compete against all the others in the TV shootout in the end of September, which we will all be there. Now, this is also a very difficult transition. We focus on black level at the very end. It's a little darker in the room now, as you can tell. No problems at all. Also checking it in SDR, which is this demo here. No dimming of the image to compensate for blooming, which is so important. Still a very 3D effect. Clear delineation of the corners from light to dark. Now we're gonna move into the sound department, show you the different settings, the different options, things you can tweak. When I'm finished with this, I'll have you raise your volume and then we'll return after. I want you to be able to hear the surround effects. Listen for the separation, the clarity, the music, the crickets. It's the best sounding TV I have ever heard. And I do believe no soundbar needed if you do purchase the Sharp XLED. And there is a sense of height and surround, especially in the last part of this demo, what you'll see with the cricket. Or it might be a praying mantis, actually. We're gonna move into the sound portion now. Please raise your volume.
Now we're gonna quickly show you some gaming on the PS5, show you the gaming preset. It's about midnight at this time um, that I am here and I'll do a dedicated uh, video on gaming once I have all the information from Sharp. I don't see a game bar. There is auto low latency mode. Local dimming does work. Um, dynamic contrast or their local contrast, though it isn't grayed out, didn't see it make a big difference. I want to get clarity on that. But I still want to be able to show you how the game mode looks, and it looks very good. I will say, if anything, the game mode again very clear clarity and it has a realistic look to it and you're able to also while um, you are here playing you can jump out of this preset into the others and for those of you that like to leave game mode and go into the other presets you can do that and then add motion interpolation if you like which i did do and uh, there wasn't much in regards to motion artifacting. So it does have that very responsive feel and that flexibility to leave game mode if you like, if that's your thing. Very realistic game mode as we move into Street Fighter. Very responsive, again, very clean. So overall for me, extremely impressed with the Sharp about 10 hours at the end that I spent with it, including the unboxing. Clarity, as I mentioned, it has that Panasonic Sony accuracy, that same clarity. Excellent mini LED. Sound is off the charts. I like the design, love the swivel. I love the sturdiness of the chassis. It is a very heavy due to the sound, which for me is okay. As we move into Souls, where what's important with this demo is to see the effectiveness of the local dimming as I transition from light to dark. All right, guys, I am Brian. This is Tech Therapy. I hope you enjoyed our first look at the Sharp XLED. Special thanks to Value Electronics. Please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you for watching. Love you guys. Take care.